So yesterday I had a super chat about the philosophy of asceticism and uh, the person autonomous wanted me to comment on what is asceticism and whether her, whether I agree with her video. So asceticism is the practice or of strict self-denial as a measure of personal and especially spiritual discipline. The condition, practice, or mode of life of an ascetic, rigorous abstention from self-indulgence. So I think it's a little bit radical in terms of a view. Um, I I wouldn't say that it's a good thing to be in absolute self-denial. However, uh, in a in a world where people are so much into hedonism. Someone like me can look like I'm an asceticist, but I'm not really because I believe in p pleasures and I believe that nature guides us toward things that are pleasurable and I enjoy having a good life with Mama JF. I enjoy, I enjoy spending time with family. I enjoy uh, sometimes drinking. I enjoy good food. So pleasure is not a bad thing and it's not something I would totally reject out of philosophical consideration. I think there's a lot of people out there who are too obsessed with well-being and pleasure and they they don't have more these uh, deontological and uh, moral pursuits, more fundamental ones. But I wouldn't say that we are misguided by nature to, by listening to our pleasures. And so I disagree with asceticism. That being said, her video is very different from the um, from the um, description we've just seen. And her video seeks, uh, it makes three points. It starts with the uh, statement that the universe is converging toward cold and so, and toward disorganization and toward absence of gravity and toward essentially nothingness and what she calls the negative tendency, which we could call the uh, the entropy principle, let's say, the, the fact that there's entropy and things tend to get destroyed, things that are structured. And she says, and then there's life, and life is evidently a counter tendency to this. So in that sense, she's right about uh, about this disequilibrium, which is what we talked about, you know, the, this... Uh, this book, the animated and the inanimated, uh, that is uh, that that she essentially captured through this statement, uh, this theory that life goes against entropy. Essentially, it never violates entropy in the end, but it it kind of is a, a counter force to entropy. Uh, that's very interesting. But she says from this you can conclude a form of asceticism, uh, which is essentially that. Uh, you understand that your suffering uh, is a part of the evolutionary process. And, and with that statement, I agree. You understand that you suffer because nature made you that way so that you would act better. <clears throat> so, for example, if you burn yourself on the oven, well, you burn yourself, you suffered, but it makes you better in the future because you will avoid this oven uh, in the future. So um, it's kind of integrating the idea of suffering as being a positive force because we understand that it is something that's needed to make us better. And with that, I agree also. Uh, perhaps where I, I may disagree a little more is that there is this fundamental difference between pleasures and suffering. And, uh, you know, asceticism, given how it's defined, inevitably leads you to want a little less pleasure and a little more suffering. And I think it's, I would be more absolutely balanced and just say both suffering and, uh, both suffering and well being and pleasures are just parts of life they are they are kind of attractors into the world that make you avoid certain things and try to profit or try to use certain other things or try to benefit from other things so i agree 
with much of what is said here. However, we should not sanctify suffering. Suffering is just it's just a piece of who we are. We shouldn't seek it either. 